Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the Living in Utah live question and answer session here Thursday evening, 8 p.m. every Thursday. I don't think I've missed a Thursday in quite a while. This is an opportunity. You're welcome to ask any questions you would like or comments. Whether it's on real estate, state of Utah, you name it. Uh, just an open discussion. I do get people sometimes from around the world. So if you do have questions about the United States, by all means, I'll try my very best. It has been a unusual week weather-wise in Utah. We received some snow, especially in the higher elevations. There was areas like Logan, Utah this week that actually saw some snow on the ground. Not normal for this time of year, but we much, much need it. We have been in a drought all year, so the moisture has been a relief. We are hoping for a winter that contains a lot of moisture so that we can have drinking water and water for your yards, etc. next summer. So, um, so that's kind of how the week has gone. So the temperatures have been a little bit cooler, a lot cooler. Next week, it's supposed to warm up again. So just like a burst of change of weather. Um, usually don't see in October like this, but has been a little unusual this year with the weather. We had quite a few hot days during the summertime. So we've had our run different weather this year. In the news this week, what's happening in Utah? Google has acquired some land in Eagle Mountain for a possible data center. So uh, it's big news, real big news. Um, give you an idea. Oh, I don't really need that part. Let's give you an idea where I am referring to on the map. If you're not familiar with the area too much, but Eagle Mountain. So we've got the Provo Orm area right down here. Uh, so we're just south of Salt Lake City in northern Utah. And Eagle Mountain is on the other side of the Utah Lake. That is where they have acquired some land to possibly put in a data center. And my guess is if they have acquired the land, they are probably going to put a data center in. Um, so interesting news, interesting news. Don't know how some of the residents who have purchased homes out there may feel about the um, data center going in into their neighborhood. So that would be interesting when I'm out that area. I'll have to ask some questions. Good evening. We have done many hikes through the Aspens in the Cottonwood Canyons area. What is your favorite location to view the fall colors? Well, interesting that you said that. So I have been out also with the fall colors video coming out on the fall colors so i'm working on it right now it's far from complete but typically when we talk about fall colors the higher elevations change the fastest as they start coming elevation starts coming down so we have a little bit of a long fall season for colors it starts to work its way down so Big Cottonwood Canyon is always great. A lot of areas. Little Cottonwood Canyon is amazing. I really like to drive from Camas, Utah, to Mirror Lake. That's one of my favorites. Bryce National Park is a great place also to view the fall colors. Just about anywhere in the mountains. If you're in the Ogden area, Go up towards Snow Basin Ski Resort. Go up anywhere up Eden, Huntsville, Liberty, up towards where some of the hiking spots are. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful colors. And uh, I've got firsthand knowledge on Snow Basin this year, so it, it is it's from up there. 
that's some of the places that, you know, Little Cottonwood Canyon, Big Cottonwood Canyon are, are very popular. The Camas to Mirror Lake Drive is great. I personally like taking that drive. I love that part of the state. So, um, you know, a few years ago when I used to be, had a motorbike, uh, we used to ride that area. So especially in the fall, great ride, great, great ride. So don't own a bike anymore. Not a on street bike anyways, but, uh, that's some of my spots. It, it's beautiful. You get the, we, in Utah, we, this time of year, we will, the trees will turn to, you get a yellow, you get a green, you get an orange and you can find some like purple reddish colors where they um, change color to. So that is my favorite when you can find that purple reddish change. Beautiful, beautiful. So. All right. So Salt Lake City is throwing their name they their name in half for quite a while to host the Winter Olympics. They are shooting for 2030 or 2034. Not far down. If we get 2030, we're 9 years away. Um, one challenge with that they feel they may have trying to get the 2030 Winter Olympics is LA is hosting the 2028 Olympics. So they typically do not um, award area that already has an Olympics coming towards them. See what happens. I think it's just a matter of time. That, that's my opinion. I think the Olympics will eventually be here, whether it's in 15, 20 years. Uh, Salt Lake City, one of the only Winter Olympics that was profitable. Facilities still. All the facilities that were built are still here and many more. Some have been turned over to like student housing, something like that. But I think they can make something work. But as far as the athletic facilities, were, you know, they're still good to go. Still good to go. They built a lot during that time period and they're still being used today. Okay, agreed. We also did eight mile hike at Snow Basin two weeks ago. Just amazing. Yeah, um, Snow Basin, beautiful area to uh, um, catch the colors. I actually went up to Snow Basin for one other reason. They are going to put a large, uh, I can't remember, maybe 300 room hotel with a commercial complex, uh, maybe at the bottom on the side right there at Snow Basin. So they can attract the people out of state that want to come here and go skiing, basically stay at the hotel, go straight to the ski resort, hotel, ski resort. At Snow Basin right now, you do not have that opportunity. So I was curious to get up there to get an idea, rough idea of where they're going to build that. So I was, I was curious. Curiosity kills the cat. But uh, that's the other reason I went up to Snow Basin. I love Snow Basin. I'm a big Snow Basin fan. So they held the men's downhill race there. They held some other events during the Winter Olympics, but the men's downhill is what I went and witnessed up there. And it was a time of my life. Absolute, time, absolute blast to see the athletes at the rate of speed that they travel. I had witnessed it on TV. See it live was just amazing. It was, was beautiful. Beautiful. So. If we do get the Winter Olympics, I'd recommend that people buy a couple tickets, go out to some of the events that you enjoy, and um, have a good time. Great, great time. So another really thing they do with the Olympics that here in 2002, and I'm assuming they're going to do it everywhere, each country will rent like a warehouse or a building. Most of them are all in Salt Lake City. And they honor the athletes that participate. And we, the U.S. one was difficult to get into. The lines were long. Well, we caught the German one. And I didn't speak the language, didn't know what they were saying. But the athletes would come out and they would award and the beer was flowing and the food was flowing. And the atmosphere was amazing. Just amazing. All the athletes on the stage. It was really cool. So we caught a couple of different countries. So speaking of the... Uh, 
Speaking of the hiking, I had a conversation today with an individual and he mentioned that in Utah, you never run out of activities. Thought about that. But he predominantly was from larger city. He had always been in larger cities, cities like LA, Atlanta, Chicago. And he said here in Utah, there's so many outdoor activities to do that you you doesn't run out. You know, you go fly fishing, rock climbing, hiking, mountain biking. You can find something for your particular enjoyment: skiing, golfing, fishing, camping. You name it, we have it here in the state. And he's he was absolutely right. Uh, I sometimes forget some of the things that we he had been, he lived quite a bit of it in a larger city and he just said the opportunities were not there. So it's uh, fortunate for what we have here in the state of Utah. You can probably find a hobby or two or three or four. And that has always been my dilemma. I enjoy so many different hobbies. I rarely have time to do a lot of them. I used to be a real big skier. Now I only go a couple times, but snowmobile, I haven't had a chance to snowmobile a whole lot. I used to be a real big snowmobile person. Um, I do more in the snowcat. Uh, I really enjoy going out to the back country in the snowcat. So, but th there is, it's, it's endless. Good evening, Gail. We just purchased a home with a finished basement. It's one old, no landscaping yet. Any some preventing mold or other problems that might arise in the future. Um, mold is something in Utah we do not see. Uh, we're in a dry climate. Typically, if you mold it from a water source, either water that is coming through foundation walls into the basement or coming up through the basement floor. So there's a couple things you can do. Um, since the basement is finished, you don't have a chance really to dry lock the walls. But I would recommend if you are concerned about high water table that might come up through the concrete and, um, you know, soak into something that potentially lead to mold, I would recommend a sump pump. So if you do not have a hole right now in your basement for a sump pump, you can cut a hole out, get down to the rock. They usually pour rock, and then they put the concrete on top of that. If you get down to the rock area, put your sump in there with a hose to the outside. So that if any water does come up, it can pip in that sump pump, take it outside before it comes into the basement. And I'm not too sure where you purchase a home, but in northern Utah, if you are on, let's say, the west side of the freeway, so you take I-15, as far as groundwater coming up, you have a larger chance if you are on the west side of I-15 as opposed to the east side because you're closer to the lake. So some pump. And number two would be on your downspouts outside, come off the roof to buy the extensions. You can buy extensions in 10 foot, 15 foot, 20 foot length. It's just a black hose extension. You might be able to get other colors. I recommend you hook those extensions on, especially around when the snow starts to melt. So probably February, March, April, May time period, where you get more rain than snow to get that water away from the house as much as you can. And that's what I do at my house. I get the water away. Come the summer months when it all when the when it dries, I gotta mow the I put the hoses away. That keeps the water away from your house from potentially going in. But mold in general, no, you have to have a water source or yeah, some sort of water source. So either an internal water leak or you know groundwater coming up or rainwater um, coming in. Once again filling up to because your your foundation walls nearly every foundation wall has a potential of forming little cracks it's a big piece of concrete concrete cracks it's normal the concrete floor in a basement very normal it's a large slab it's hard to control 
So it's, it goes with the territory. But if you have a sump pump and you have extensions, I've never had a problem. I put those extensions on all the time. Um, when we have the rain, like they're they're on now because we could have rain for the next three or four months. So the water will go outside. Moroni, Utah. Okay. Um, do you landscape near the basement? Um, do you say sump pump? So um, as far as landscape outside of your home, mo most homes that I've been around have grass up to the house, except maybe in the front or backyard. They'll do some plants, decorative bark, curbing, et cetera, et cetera. But I have seen grass right up to my house has grass right up to the house. Haven't had a problem. Haven't seen any problem either. The other thing is a deep, and I get backtrack a little bit. When the home built, um, so I can't remember if you, see, oh, no landscaping yet. Okay, okay, great. Let's just back up a moment on the landscaping. I would make sure, 100% certain, that your property grades away from the house. If not, have somebody come in or rent your own tractor or your own little bobcat, backhoe, something, so that your, your, um, landscaping will grade away from the house. So get all your dirt so that when rain comes, it automatically flows away from the house, all four sides of the house. So that would be the first thing since there's no landscaping in. That's where I've seen some issues. Sometimes people will not do that and their, their yard is totally level and they'll go ahead and put grass in. And then the water comes and you get big puddles out there and the water starts soaking in around the house. Where if it's at a, say a one or 2% grade away from the home, water will naturally run away. So that would be the first thing on the landscape. That may, if you have to bring dirt in, typically you don't, you can usually bring dirt from your yard and start bringing it up towards the house and grade it away. So that would be my recommendation you're doing. Land. Make sure that you, you're grading away from the house, that it's graded away from the house. Abel, hey, Gail, you finally left California. Still in California, we'll move a month or two. Yep. All right, Mr. Construction. Hello, last week I met... From Salt Lake to Ephraim, good people and terrific mountains. Live in Provo is more cheap or expensive in Salt Lake. Oh, to live in Provo cheaper than living in Salt Lake? Uh, it really depends on where you're referring to in Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City prices range considerably dependent on the neighborhood. Um, there are areas that will be very similar to Provo as far as price goes. So really where you're comparing in Salt Lake, there's a huge price range. Like you can be on one section of town where you could find a three or $400,000 home. You could be in another section of town where there's very little under a million dollars. So uh, makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's about the, the, the main ways of uh, keeping water away from the house I can think of. And, you know, if you're putting your landscape in now, there, there's, there's a couple options, too. It, instead, of the, the, instead of having the tubes that you put on your downspouts, you can actually put them underground. So when, when your downspout comes off your house, you put tubing in the ground. And it goes out, say, 20 feet, and it has a little pop-up. So when the water goes out there, it pops up to that section of the yard. So it's kind of like all built in. So, yeah, there, there's a couple options. So, yeah, there, there's some options on doing that there also if you haven't put it, put your landscaping in yet. The biggest is just grading away from the property. Some people do not get that opportunity because the landscaping is already in their home. 
Have fun in Utah. I won't be able to leave till next year, but I'm saving up to move myself. Oh, yes, yes. Um, you know, speaking of California, the hot topic with some of the phone conversations that I have had in three or four weeks was from some people that were hoping that Governor Newsom would be out the door, they would stay in California, and that has not happened. So now they are considering moving California, leaving California. So, and that might boost people leave California because I'm, you know, small sample size that I'm talking to, very small sample size. But it seems like some people have, you know, are waiting to see if they maybe potential change by uh, rid of um, Newsom. And though, and that did not happen, so they like the status quo is going to continue on. So this was the article I was looking for last. Week. Uh, I'm a big, I'm a big cancer fan. Um, I do everything I can for cancer research, etc. Speaking of that, if you are um, a fundraiser or boy, donating information on it, etc. That's all I know is I'm going. My sister. Already got me a ticket next Saturday, the 23rd in Salt Lake City. I believe it's at Liberty Park. You'd have to double check with the Komen um, organization. They have a, I believe it's going to be a one mile walk run to raise money for uh, cancer. So if you just want to donate or you'd like to pay and go for a walk, et cetera, et cetera, I believe it's in Liberty Park. I did a few, a couple of years, maybe two, three years ago. And with COVID, everything got shut down. But, uh, if you do interest in that, it's next Saturday, the 20th. Um, I'll be there. So if you show up, uh, say hello. So uh, BYU researchers have discovered a way to attack what they call the cancer driver that is in a gene. And they have targeted some medicine um, to try to cure what they call the cancer driver in a particular gene. So great news. Uh, it's going to target the, speci the specific mutate in the tumor. So ideally, that should spare the other tissues. So that would be some great, great news. Great, great news. Also in Utah, the Utah Jazz. Breaking news. The Utah Jazz. They're going to change their colors. They're going to change their identity. They, um, so the current owner of the Utah Jazz uh, brought in Dwayne Wade, a former NBA player. He bought into the team. He, he owns a, a percentage of the team. And he had over the last three or five seasons, something like that, the Jazz have been They've been navy colors, yellow, green, red, black, yellow, and even purple. So they've had an array of colors. So they feel like they need to change the identity of the team. They're going to go with just black and white. So that will be Jazz's identity, black and white. They're going to rebrand them. Another event that's very popular in Utah, we have the Bonneville Salt Flats. I'll give you an idea of where I'm referring to. So if you would come go directly west out of Salt Lake City towards the Nevada border, just before you get to Windover, Utah, over in this section over here, you have the Bonneville Salt Flats in which race variety of cars, motorcycles, trying to break speed records. A land speed record, the speed record for a particular motorcycle or car or pickup truck. It has been a very, it's one of the few places in the world at where you can run something at a high speed for a long, long period of time with on the salt flats. 
the popularity is growing constantly increasing the permit requests have skyrocketed out there more and more people are willing or would like to take their vehicles out there to try to set some records so it is a i've been out there once or twice it's been many years now it's definitely something to research if you're a car fan or whatever and take a trip out there sometime it's uh, uh pretty remarkable not trying to make this a political question but how is utah compared to california i mean that california isn't pro freedom of anything i ask because everyone mostly hears about california versus new york versus texas versus florida correct i mean we are um we're definitely the opposite of California. So one of the reasons you don't hear, you're, you're hearing a lot about Texas and Florida. They are the two hot spots right now in the country that a lot of people are moving to. So tremendous growth in, in those states this probably in the last year, year and a half. But Utah has the citizens of Utah are, you know, they, they enjoy their freedoms and they want to keep their freedoms. The kind of talk that goes on in California that, that we have here that the defund the police, uh, uh, shut down some of the trails, some of the riding areas, some of the fishing areas, et cetera, et cetera. It just doesn't really um, here. So we typically vote Republican in the state of Utah. We have elected some Democrats to serve in the House and Senate from time to time. And, but for the most part, um, Definitely pro freedom in in the state of Utah. People love their outdoor recreation. They love their gun rights and rights, freedoms, etc. So it's uh, and that's that's the one fear when you talk about people leave California and come to Utah. People who live in Utah. The ones that get upset about people from California moving here. It's because they feel that the people from that are moving here will try to make this state just like California. And that's what they do not want. And I find the opposite because I talk to many people that have moved from California or are considering moving from California. And I would say every, nearly everyone I talk to, one of the reasons they would like to leave California is because they do not agree with what's going on in California and they want something else. So, where we just purchased, the people are super friendly and helpful, even with our California plates shining in the sun. Yes, I haven't seen any problem with California license plates. I know in Idaho they say the rumor up there is uh, don't drive around with California license plates. I see it all the time here. I don't think people have a problem. Uh, I don't feel we're the state. Never personally, maybe this has happened, but I have never personally witnessed or heard of someone, like say with a California license plate and somebody confronting them, telling them to go home or leave the state. I, I've never heard of that and have not seen that. It, it happened, but I have not experienced it myself or read about it or heard about it, any kind of my son told the seller that we're political refugees i like to leave politics out of it yeah and i do too i i like to leave politics out of it and quite honestly the last year and a half has been the only time that i Ever recall working with people 
and they bring up politics. Three, four, five years ago, people were moving to Utah, just they on the lifestyle change. They got a job here, et cetera, et cetera. Over the last year and a half, a lot of the conversations are, I want to leave California because of the politics. So it has become a part of my business. So I try to keep on top of it a little bit and find out what's going on in California and what's not, et cetera, et cetera, and around the country. But this last year and a half, politics has dominated around the whole country. And it's not just Utah, not just California, Utah. Uh, I receive calls from Seattle, Portland, Chicago, New York, quite a few states, Texas. So, yeah, and some some of it's all because of politics. So, be forewarned, Salt Lake City is more left than the state. You are absolutely right. So. We do have, have areas that will see, like, come election time, if you are on the east side of Salt Lake City, you will see a lot of Democratic political sign. And I would almost say you will probably see more than you would Republican. So, yes, we do have our Democratic supporters in the state of Utah. We are going to live far from Salt Lake City. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, it's all it, it's all great funding here. I mean, if, if you're a Democrat or you're a Republican, it doesn't really matter. People here, I feel they 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 do not judge you. They, they really don't. I've experienced that one way or the other. Um, just the, the people in Utah want to keep what they have. So where it's gun rights, hunting rights, fishing rights, riding UTVs, whatever freedoms that we have in this, they want to keep it that way. And I personally do not see it changing uh, in the short term. The governor that we have currently in office, he is from um, rural Utah, and he knows what it's like to grow up on a farm and enjoy the hours and he's he's been around all the you know, parks and everything and i personally think his views are to keep utah the same so i don't see anything changing here how salt lake city goes so goes the state yeah we are retired and we want a slow lifestyle and that is another thing that has, that I've experienced myself is more and more retirees reaching out to me that want to move to Utah and they want to live in a safe place with a lot of activities and basically you know live a healthy life to possibly live as long as they possibly can. So they are choosing Utah for its outdoor recreation, its low crime, great neighborhoods, family-friendly state. It's a place that they would like to consider and possibly move here, and some are moving here. So it is definitely attracting quite a few retirees to the state of Utah. So it has changed a little bit, you know, um, when you look at a lot of researches or the magazine, best places to retire, typically you do not see Utah ranked up there as high. Our neighboring states like Wyoming and Nevada sometimes receives a higher ranking, typically because they have no state income tax. In the state of Utah, have state income tax. It's a flat rate. I call it 5%. I think technically it's 4.95%. So some of the magazines are like that. Are like, oh, they don't quite recommend Utah because you're going to have to pay state income tax. But to people all the time, the retirees are like, we don't, we don't worry about the 5% income. You know, we're going to probably have lower property taxes. Um, safe area, great neighborhoods, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yes, you nailed it. Yeah, 
yeah, more and more retirees. I talked quite a few and we're in a generation or we're in a time. And I mean, I, I think we're definitely in a, in a time at where people, especially middle age and up, uh, there's quite a few people out there that are trying to live a little cleaner lifestyle, um, be more um, active lifestyle. And I think a lot th those people believe that if you, you can take care of your body, it'll take care of you and, you know, keep you around a few more years. I think we're in that kind of generation that um, a lot of people are believing that. And I personally believe that. So I think if you can stay active throughout your life and um, you could hopefully live a little bit longer. So, so for what I'm getting at, the people are very friendly. Leave them alone and they will leave you alone. And yes, they, they will definitely give respect. Um, Individual rights as a youngster, I'm seeing more and more reason to move. Yeah. So, Abel, this is it. This is what I call. I call it keyboard warriors. So, if someone is a keyboard warrior, they, they go on social media and they're like, this particular race, religion, or sex, or whatever does it, blah, 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 blah. And they spoo out all the information. People, of particular religion or race, they are going to bend themselves and they are going to battle back. What I call, so what I refer to as the keyboard warriors who get on social media, if, if you do that, you will get backlash. So, if you want to go on there and say, we need to ban gun rights, we need to stop hunting, we need to do this, we need to do that, you will get you will get backlash. People will will go against you. So, but if you respect someone, if somebody wants to go out and hunt, somebody wants to go out and fish, or ride a UTV, or own guns, if you, you know, Respect their decision. They will respect your decision in the state of Utah. That's pretty much how it goes. But if you're a keyboard warrior and you want to make issues with all those things, people will hammer back at you. So, Any recommendation for a new resident not used to living in where it snows? Always sunny in California, rarely even rain. Okay, uh, you're not used to an area that it snows. Well, I could take that conversation a lot of areas. I would say, first of all, when we're talking about driving, preferably if, if you're in the market to buy a vehicle, look for something that's all drive, four wheel drive, if not front wheel drive. Probably try to stay away from rear wheel drive vehicles, unless it's, let's say you own a Mustang or Camaro and you're just gonna use it during the summer months. In the winter months when it snows, can get a little bit, it, a bit dicey. Uh, number two on um, handling the snow as far as driving on, on the snow. If you see, so the major roads, the the freeways and the major roads that go through cities are the ones that get the plow service first. So if you stick to those roads, they'll probably be cleared of snow and let it out before the snow plows get out. So if you can stick to the major roads and plant route that way. Um, or how you get to work or to the grocery store, you will keep yourself out of traveling on some back roads or snowy roads. The major roads get plowed first. Uh, snow blower, it will probably be the very best purchase you've ever made. I particularly own two of them. I've got an old one, and then I upgraded to another one. I kept the old one because the value wasn't there. But I run it all the time just in case my main snowblower breaks. I have a backup one. 
Um, shoveling snow by hand is can be hard on the back and can lead to injuries. If you do purchase a snowblower, I do have a video, by the way, on some winter tips uh, on my channel. If And I think it's a very good video. If you do purchase a snowblower, the number one tip is, the most important tip is, the chute where the snow comes out, never, never, never put your fingers down there to unclog the uh, backup of snow. You unclog that, there could be compression on those blades and they will turn and chop your fingers off or injure them. People go to the emergency room every single winter. My advice, get yourself a stick. And if you get a clog, you get that stick and you jam it down there. And if it's going to chew the stick, it's going to chew the stick. So um, some decent snow boots I would recommend on, on, on snowy days, something that's got some good traction in case there's any kind of ice or anything like that, especially if you're going out in the dark, maybe to a basketball game or a football game or something, it's dark outside and you can't quite see the ground as well. Maybe there's some ice. Um, if you've got some shoes that have real good traction on them, we'll definitely keep you upright. So I do have a video on my channel, though, about um, winter. So winter tips, uh, you can look at that, too. Where is there public land to hunt near Layton? Just go to the east side up in the mountains. All right. Thank you. I read a sign at Hobbs Reservoir that cougars can get up to 260 pounds. Uh, possible. Possible. Hmm, I wasn't aware of that. Thank you for the answer. We'll watch your snow video. Yes. Yes. And depending on where you live, uh, um, the amount of snowfall that you get. So uh, if you're closer to what we call the bench areas um, along the Wasatch Front, you will receive more snow than probably the freeway section. So I would, um, so if you get, say, one or two inches down there, but up on the east bench, you may have to deal with six, seven, eight inches worth of snow. So depending on where you're at as far as snow goes, um, the more or less that you may have to deal with. And if you live in one of the mountain towns like Park City, then you will have to deal with a lot more snow than you would down on the valley floor. It's really not. I don't really think the snow is that bad in Utah. Snow will, for the most part, it snows two inches, three, four inches. The plows come out, the sun comes out, and within hours or the next day, you are looking at dry roads, dry sidewalks, dry, you know, the driveway, et cetera, et cetera. You'll still have snow in your yard, but for the most part, um, it comes and it goes. It's, so the next day, you you know, if we have no more storms come through, the road is and you can commute and go wherever you need to go, typically. All right, I'll be moving to uh, Provo Orm. Okay, okay. So you're not in one of the – you're not in the mountain towns. So, yeah, you will not receive. Now, if you're on the east bench of Provo Orm, you will receive more snow than you will towards the freeway where I-15 is. They will receive its little higher elevation. And it, it's it's amazing. You, you, you look at it, it doesn't look like much of an elevation change. But when it snows, say at the freeway, they get two inches. Well, up on the east bench, they're getting four or five inches of snow. It changes that much. Okay, I'll be moving to Provo Orem. Okay. That is about all I have tonight. Do we have any more questions this evening before I wrap it up and call it an evening? And we will be back again next weekend, next week. Park City man was charged Thursday with murder for just shooting one of the people who was renting a room in his basement. So, Mr. Z, was that the man 
what they were drinking and had an argument and a gun come out and somebody got shot. Was that the case? Um, I do one that comes to my mind and there might've been maybe two cases. I wouldn't think in park city though, we would have two murders, but um, I, I read it one of them where they were drinking and something got out of control and out came a gun and shot another man. Well, thank you. I'll be back again next week.